Philip the Fair of France had borrowed heavily from the Templars in order to finance his war against England. Unable to pay back his debts, he ordered their arrest, accused them of heresy, and in 1307, burned most of them at the stake. Other royal houses were eyeing the immense estates of the Hospitallers. Only the protection of the Pope would spare them from a similar fate. Their holdings in Europe remained safe, and the sugar refinery in Cyprus, which supplied most of the sugar to Europe, kept enhancing their wealth. Without a mainland foundation, the exiled Hospitallers were forced to take to the sea. They started building galleys and a fleet. With its budding naval resources, the order helped Genoese merchants take the island of Rhodes from the Turks. The fact that this island off the Turkish coast had great strategic importance did not escape Grand Master Villaré. By occupying it, he made Rhodes the frontier outpost for the Western powers. And the order appeared as the only military organization that could revive the idea of the Crusades. The Pope promptly transferred all of the Templars' properties in Europe to the Hospitallers, who had their final revenge against their longtime competitors. Grand Master Fulk de Villaré gained the official endorsement of the Christian kings and consolidated all of the newly gained properties in Europe. After 19 years in Cyprus, Rhodes became the capital of the order. Villaret initiated an ambitious building plan that spared no expense. The Grand Master built an ornate palace for himself. The idea of the auberge, a separate residence for each nationality, was born in Rhodes. The knights from Provence, Auvergne, France, Spain, Italy, England, and Germany had all formed independent groups by nationality, known as the tongues, and each tongue now had their own lavish quarters. The power Independence and earthly pursuits of the knights were becoming so pervasive that even their supreme ally, the Pope, was disturbed. Pope Clement complained to Villaret that the knights' lifestyle was far too lavish. You ride beautiful fine horses, feast on exquisite meats, wear magnificent apparel, drink from goblets of gold and silver, and keep falcons and hounds for the chase. But the attitude of the knights remained carefree and defiant. Rhodes became one of the most fortified cities in the world. 